Since I play and love SMB3 so much, people often ask me if I've ever seen the movie The Wizard, which is pretty much a huge commercial for Mario 3 before it came out. This movie was gamer porn for the kids of the 80s and 90s. It was filled with games like Double Dragon, Rad Racer, and even the Power Glove made an appearance. I haven't seen it, so this got me curious. I decided to check around and see what I could find out about this movie, and I learned that the Mario 3 section was close to the end, and much like ABGN described, it's like the gates of hell opening to debut Mario 3. I instantly started to watch the end race sequence, not knowing who the characters were or how they even got to that point, but let me tell you, I found so many things wrong with this ending sequence, it actually started to bother me. I took it upon myself to try and find as many things wrong with this ending as I could, and I think I found 100% of everything wrong, including some things that have never been mentioned in any other video regarding this topic. I found so much weird shit that I wanted to show off how bad this last section is, and I know, I know, it's just a movie for kids. Yeah, a movie that cost a lot of money and had Nintendo in it. I honestly think Nintendo saw this and said, fuck that, never again. To this day, Nintendo is still pissed about that ending. They couldn't even get the sound effects right in the game. But before I spoil anything, let's start from the beginning and work our way down the list. This one doesn't really have anything to do with something being wrong with the ending of the movie, but I love the fact that they made Lucas's number a 169. It's amazing. Whenever the movie displays the screens, you can see that Jimmy starts to focus on absolutely nothing. Oh, and don't get me started on this video Armageddon thing. It is by far the worst scorekeeping program I have ever seen. I find this timer very interesting because it actually proves that they didn't time out this entire race. From every point from now until the end of the race, any time you see the timer, if you look really closely, you can see that no one is on the stage, but you can see the screens and the games that everyone's playing on, but no one's up there, it's just a dead stage. When Lucas gets the first mushroom, you can clearly see that the small screen and the big screen are not displaying the same thing. I feel really bad for the players because they had a massive amount of input delay. This one drives me crazy. The announcer calls level one, world one. And I know they just started in world one, so maybe he could be talking about that, but no, he makes an even bigger mistake later in the race. Plus he never says level once. This one is really strange. Shut up. I'm trying to figure out what the announcer says. Come on, come on, come on. Let's hear it for Robin, you ducky. Well, that doesn't really sound right at all. If anyone can figure this out, please let me know. This is where things start to get really fucked up. Two scenes later, it shows Jimmy, Lucas, and Mora not having the same scores that they just announced, and then for one quick second, it changes and shows Lucas with 13,350, Jimmy the same, and Mora with 12,090. From the first mushroom to the first pit, they've gained thousands of points. Anyone who knows Mario can tell you that mushrooms are good, unless you're playing Mario 2 The Lost Levels. But in this scene, Jimmy's dad tells him to watch out for the mushroom. Jimmy! Watch the mushroom! For a split second, you can even see Cory being like, what the fuck are you talking about? Dad just fucked up. If you look closely, you can see that all three screens display the ending of level one. 10 seconds later, you can see that they're all entering level three. What happened to level two? Oh wait, there's level two. Apparently they beat it in three seconds. Where's the super swaggy slide strats? Whoa, 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 whoa. How does Cory know about the warp? You're a phony! Hey, this guy's a great big phony! This is a brand new game. Nobody's ever played it. How does he even know warps are in the game? Fucked up. We just saw Lucas beat level one before Jimmy, and of course, he started level three roughly 10 seconds after Jimmy. Lucas, start. 24,150. Jimmy Wood, 26,000. The announcer clearly just neglected Mora when announcing points. If you look really closely, whenever he dies, for some reason he jumps up 18,000 points? What the fuck? I've played in front of a live audience before, just like what they're doing. And I even was playing Mario 3, and let me tell you. You're gonna have to start over, Jimmy! Just, just, just stay calm, okay? Stay calm! Someone uncalmly yelling out that I need to stay calm would make me a hell of a lot less calm. Remember how I mentioned that they couldn't even get the sound effects? Lucas lands on a Paragoomba, and it makes like, 
half the sound of Mario dying. Also, why the hell does it look like he's riding a snowboard every single scene? This next scene makes absolutely no sense. First off, why is Mora at the beginning of level 1? It already showed her beating that level, so how the hell did she get there? She's clearly a time traveler. And number two, why the hell is she so happy about it? I mean, you fucked up. You're at the beginning. Everyone's like three levels ahead of you. Like, you lost for sure. There's no way to make up the time. Honestly, I think that clip was supposed to be somewhere earlier in the race sequence. Somehow it managed to make its way like halfway through it. Regardless, it's, it's a big fuck up. The announcer called level 3 world 2. That's like a billion mistakes just right there, man. World two again. Oh, and guess what? The announcer's still calling it world 2. Awesome. World two. Apparently Mora just destroyed level 1, 2, and 3 in some ungodly time that could not be achieved, and now she's in second place. Whenever you start a new game of Super Mario Bros. 3, you get 4 lives. Jimmy died twice on level 3, which would bring him down to 2 lives. He got 3 end level cards, which would give him 1 extra life, and he matched a mushroom in the matchmaking game, so that would give him an additional 3. So Jimmy would actually have 5 lives instead of 7 when he enters the fort. Eh, maybe I'm looking too far into this. This is where the score gets really messed up. Once they enter the fortress, the announcer starts using the in-game score, rather than the score on the video Armageddon. Lucas And this gets really messed up because we've all been using the video Armageddon to track the score, not the actual in-game score. No one would ever think to fly up there their first time playing. Not only that, is that whenever you fly up there, you have to run all the way to the right side of the wall, and then you have to know to press up to go into the door. There's no way he would ever know that it's there. If you listen closely, the chest makes some really weird sound. What is that? For some reason, Jimmy decided to beat level 5, for no fucks given. No reason. And he also did it in an impossible amount of time, and then he decides to warp. The sound for the tornado is wrong. It actually plays a little tune whenever you use the warp and the tornado comes along the screen. The tornado doesn't actually make a sound, but they, they put some, like, squeegee on a windshield sound for the tornado coming up. I mean, wouldn't that cost more money and take more time to put a different sound effect in rather than just leaving it the way it is and let the little tune play? Moving to World 4 in the World 9 Warp Zone section is like some weird deflated one-up sound. Jimmy Boy. Jimmy Boy. Jimmy Boy. Why didn't they just leave it the normal space moving sound? Like, it, it probably took more work putting in this other sound and timing it out correctly. After Jimmy uses the warps, Mora has close to 60,000 points, but for some reason the announcer says she only has 47. Mora Grissom, 47,000. Jimmy has almost done World 4 level 1, but when the camera pans out on the last second, he's actually still at the start. Whoa, 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 wait, wait. Did you guys just see that? Is that some like army guy walking up on stage? I've never seen that before. I guess they couldn't cut that out. He's just, where is he going? What is he doing? That's kind of creepy a little bit. <laughs> Lucas is still at that part in the fortress where the ceiling goes up and down. I mean, all you have to do is run to the end and there's a door that you go in. And not only that, once you're at the end, you're safe. You don't get hit by the spikes. So how is he still there Yet Jimmy has done so much more, but Jimmy is still behind. From where the counter said 58 seconds left, if Jimmy did level 5 and then went as fast as speedrunners did, all the way through the warp zone, world 4 level 1, it would still take him roughly about 1 minute and 30 seconds. So his first time playing this game California. was faster than anyone else who's ever played this game. It's impossible to beat 4-1 in 9 seconds without using P-Speed and having the tail.
Jimmy only beats Lucas by 3,000 points, yet he did so much more. I think it's only natural to be the best at a game your first time playing through. Know where everything is, be the best player in the world. I mean, take a look at what it was like the first time I played Mario 3. 